Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Okay, 2015 mock question on, on functions. The diagram shows the graph of the function g of x equals root 4x minus 3. Part A, state whether or not g of x is injective. Give a reason for your answer. Okay, so injective. So if we remember that one, that was when the horizontal line test cut the graph at most once. Okay, so how I would answer this is I would do a couple of examples of a horizontal line test. Okay, so horizontal means I'm coming through the y-axis. And you can see for all of these, I am going through my graph, which is here at most once. Okay, so my conclusion then is uh, g of x is injective. Um, horizontal. line tests are crossing the graph g of x at most once. Okay, if I'd done one down here, it didn't cross the graph at all. So it doesn't mean it fails, okay, because it's at most once. Okay, so that is an injective um, function. Part B, under what criteria is g of x bijective? So this is what I was talking about when I was doing those those, um, those recordings. You, you can be, be asked to define the conditions under which a function does something, in this case is bijective. For what domain and codomain does g of x meet this criteria? Okay, so this is why you have to know these words. So the domain is the uh, set of input values. The codomain, probably the least used one, but the co codomain is the set of all possible output values. Okay, and the one they haven't mentioned here is the range, which is the set of output values. Okay, so codomain and range, slightly different range are the actual output values of that function. Codomain is the all, all, all the possible output values that exist. Okay, so how do we make this function be bijective? Bijective. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to write down is bijective equals injective plus surjective. Okay, because that's how you prove something is bijective. We've already said it's injective. Okay, so now we need to look at well, how do we make this be surjective? Okay, and what did we say surjective was? Surjective means excuse me, all outputs are used basically, okay? Or all outputs have an input value. So when I come back to here, have all outputs got an input value? Well, no, okay? So there's loads of horizontal line tests I could do down here and they never touch the graph, okay? So those outputs, okay, remember this is my output axis, Y's are your outputs. All of these outputs that are here do not have an input, okay? So that is why this graph isn't at this minute in time surjective. So the question asked was, well, where, where is it subjective? Where is it surjective? Define the conditions under which it's subject, surjective, okay? And you can see that if I do any horizontal line test up here on the positive side of the y-axis, so all of these positive values of y, um, I do get a matching input, okay? Now, 
domain is the set of input values. So I have no input value here. So I need to find out, well, where does this graph cut the, the X axis? Because from that value up, all of the X inputs are good. Okay. And then it says um, the codomain, which is the all the set of all possible output values. Well, it's from zero up, isn't it? And, and it's it's to infinity because that graph will go on forever. Okay, so let's try and get that down in 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 maths language. So we'll do the domain first, which is the set of input values. So how do I figure out that point there? Well, I'd like to know where that graph cuts through the x-axis. Okay, so at the x-axis y is zero. Okay, so my function, was it f of x? It wasn't, it was g of x, is equal to root, root 4x plus 3 minus 3. Okay, um, at the x-axis y is zero, well this, this is y, so where is 4x minus 3 equal to zero is what I'm wondering. Um, square both sides. Solve for x. Okay, so the coordinates of that point are three quarters and zero. Okay, so for the domain then, for what domain um, is that, is g of x bijective? Okay, so for the domain, g of x is bijective. from x equals three quarters to infinity. Okay, or if I write it down as we would write down a range, you write it down with square brackets, infinity. Okay, same way we would write a range um, in this, the same way we would write the range if we were doing trig and you were talking about one of the waves. Okay, so three quarters to infinity is where that graph is bijective. Okay, let's have a look at the codomain. Okay, um, I would write this down as part of my answer if I didn't have it up there, the set of all possible output values. Um, and this is simply from zero to infinity. Okay, it's all of the values um, greater than zero. Okay, you can write that as R plus. Okay, just in case you see that maths language anywhere, they are the set of, of positive real numbers. Okay, it does include the fractions, that's why they're real numbers. So they are the criteria under which G of X is, is bijective. C then, find the inverse function G inverse of X and sketch the graph of g inverse of x on the diagram above. Okay, so the inverse function, well, g of x was equal to the square root of 4x minus 3. Um, we went through the rules for inverse functions, so write it in terms of y. Okay, um, then we would isolate the x, so write it in terms of x. So again, square both sides, because if we were to get at this x, we need to get rid of the square root sign that, it, that it's hiding under. Bring the minus three over. Divide across by four. Okay, then change the y's back to x's because that's normally the maths language for an input. And then I can't have x's on both sides. Write it in functions notation then. So x squared plus 3 over 4 is f inverse of x. Okay. And then they want us to plot it. So grab your calculator. Go into table mode or, or functions mode on your calculator. Put in our inverse function. So hit the functions button. 
red square plus three all over four. Sorry, I lost it, hit the functions button. X squared plus three all over four. Okay, start and end then can be a little bit tricky if they don't give you values. I would start at zero there. I would end at maybe 10 and go up in steps of one. Okay, and it doesn't much matter Excuse me if my map values get very high at 10. I can just ignore them. Okay. Zeros. Okay, so your graph should look like something like that when you have it drawn. And in fact, we'll probably go through it a little bit more like that. Okay. One second. Okay, so I'm just looking around for a ruler. Okay, so that red line that I've drawn in there um, is the line y is equal to x. Okay, and what happens when you plot a function such as this one with its inverse is that basically one is a reflection of the other about that center line, which is y is equal to x. Okay, um, so that's how I knew that purple line was going to take that shape. Um, and and in the next video, I might do a little bit on transformations and functions and, and what that all means. OK, but you'll get it perfectly fine from just plotting it using the tables function. OK, you didn't have to necessarily know this. OK, but if you do get asked your inverse function is the reflection of the original function through um, a line that runs down through the center of them. Okay, because that is how you get back to the original value um, when you work them out. Okay, so that was that 2015 mark question, not overly too difficult if you knew all those funny bits of that functions chapter, but, but quite difficult if, if, if you didn't. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice? In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new program in electronics and self-driving technologies, which uses cutting-edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.